الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيد الأولين والآخرين بينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله سبحانه وتعالى سدنا القرآن ولله على الناس حج البيت Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it compulsory for those who can afford it to perform hajj, to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in doing hajj, we are going back to the first, to one of the first messages, the message of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Ibrahim when he Finish it building the Kaaba wa adhim fi nasi bil hajj. Call people to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in visiting the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need first of all to purify our intentions, not only to purify our body. Because it was narrated that Sayyidina Ali Zain al-Abideen radiyallahu anhu said to the people when they were looking for the purity of the place in order to perform salah, he said, have you looked at the purity of your hearts? May Allah purify us, inshallah. And in doing hajj, we have to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ Whoever obeys Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has obeyed Allah and this is the highest level of approval that you will never find any other approval other than this better than this and Rasulullah sallallahu said to the Sahaba khudu anni manasikakum learn from me how to perform your hajj and he gave them a chance so he announces that he is going to hajj before one year so as much as of the Sahaba to follow him and to be in his company and many people they came to Medina and in Hajj we visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do tawaf around the Kaaba we pray behind the maqam of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and in doing this those who can afford it they have to remember that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going around these places and to do a lot of dhikr and to avoid argument or any other forms of masiya. And also in Hajj, we go between Safa and Marwa, Sa'i, and we remember Hajar, Umm Ismail, and this woman that was looking for food and drink for her son, and we remember many people who are less fortunate than, than, uh, than us around the world whom they don't have a food to eat or to drink. In all, Hajj is a journey that we have to learn a lot from it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a great reward for those who go to Hajj. In Hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَالْحَجُّ الْمَبْرُورُ لَيْسَ لَهُ جَزَاءٌ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ a hajj that Allah has accepted has got no any other reward other than Jannah. In hajj also we remember the day of Arafat where Rasulullah gave his last speech. So people are one of two, either those who can afford it physically and financially so they go to hajj and those who are unable and this kind of people also they shouldn't fail to do their intention because niyatul mar'i khayrun min amalih the intention of someone is better than his or her deeds may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj from those who perform it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the intention of those who cannot and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a season of acceptance and mercy for all the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for all mankind. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.